deep in the furnace of a dying star. Eons of fusion have created iron, and as the nuclear furnace is cooled, a sudden and violent explosion spread the iron across the cosmos. Over the next few billion years, these heavier elements accreted into this place that we call the Earth. Time passes, and humans discover this iron deep in the Earth, and discover its mystical properties. They discover ways of forging this iron, and create one of mankind's greatest inventions, the truck stop knife. This is where the story of iron ends, and my story begins. This is JJ Jinx Truck Stop Knives! JJ Jinx Truck Stop Knives! And today, I got one of these. And, oh man, it's heavy. So I'm gonna do an unboxing. And, um, well, in the sense that I'm gonna take stuff out of a box. Of course, but um, there is no mystery to this order. I actually ordered everything in here on purpose. So um, let me show you what I got. To open this box, I'm going to use the opportunity to tell you about this knife. Uh, I've got this nice little leather sheath for it. This is an Oppenel. Uh, Oppenel is a French company that makes knives that are in this style, um, this very recognizable wood handle, and it has an interesting kind of open and locking mechanism. There's this metal piece at the top which swivels, and there's a little slot cut out. So what you do is you swivel it so the slot lines up with the blade, which rests inside of the handle. And then it slides out. Well, it doesn't slide out. It comes out. And then to lock it in place, you move the swivel back so that it keeps the blade from closing. Um, these knives are very inexpensive. This is, I think I paid like 10 bucks for it. And they make all kinds of different sizes. So this is the number eight. Um, they make them really really tiny to like that big <laughs> but I think the 8 9 10 range is kind of the most popular a lot of people like to modify these they'll, they'll change the shape of the handle or dye it a, a different color um, they make a couple of different blade materials too you can get some really nice blades if you want to spend the money um, they make uh, Damascus style blades or different types of steels this one is just a generic uh, carbon steel, so it will eventually rust with use, but if you just buy another one, and they're, they're kind of elegant and very sharp, so like, you know, you could like eat a steak with it and nobody will think that you're about to murder somebody, like if you had a machete or something. So anyway, that's the uh, Oppenel number eight. Now, the order I placed, uh, I kind of jumped on it because I ordered an item that is very rarely actually on the store. I got one of those, bear with me, as I get into it, oh my gosh, that tape. <laughs> get the paper. Lots. And lots of paper. Ah, there it is. I got one of these bug out bags. <laughs> these are made by, uh, they're, they're, they're distributed, made, I don't know, by M48. And the idea is, oh, it's upside down, that this backpack, which it says M48 Ops on it, has everything you need to survive. There's a little tag right here that has the item number. 
Now they sell these in three different sizes. Um, what I call the level one, level two, and level three backpack. Um, and they're almost always sold out. I happen to spot, this is the level one backpack. It was on the store and I was like, I have to get it. Oh my God. And it's like 50 bucks. And they didn't have the level two or three available. But my plan is uh, this summer, I'm going to be going down to Florida and I'm going to bring this with me. And I'm actually not going to open it until I get into the woods and I'm going to try to survive with only what's in here. <laughs> so it's going to be a true test of how these bug out bags perform. It might be my last video. So um, hopefully there's food and some way of procuring or purifying water. But I'm just going to put it in the corner of my room and wait until the summer to open it. But I couldn't just not get anything else. So I picked up a couple of things I was kind of looking at. Uh, one of them was, holy crap, it's big. This pen fishing rod, <laughs> which I'm probably going to bring, bring with me too. Um, and try to actually use it. And whatever I catch, I'm going to eat. Now the canals down in Florida where I'm going are kind of dirty. So it might be my last meal. Lots of stuff on the back. Instructions on how to use it, I'm assuming. Uh, portable, compact, light, easy to use, suitable for fishing from a boat, from a dam, and on ice. <laughs> okay. I <laughs> don't think I'll be doing that in Florida. Insert the real foot to the fixing foot of the rod. I'm not a fisherman. I don't know what that means. Screw down the nut beside the fishing foot of the rod. Pull out the rod and fix it. Well, I'm kind of, I'm a little bit disappointed because, like, I'm not really sure what I expected, but I thought it would be smaller, I guess. I don't know why I expected that. There's a lot they have to put in here, but this looks like the piece that where basically it telescopes, and then the reel comes separately. For some reason in my head, I thought it was all just one self-contained piece, and I thought it would be a lot smaller. Um, I'm going to try to... Uh, you know what, hell with it, I'll just rip it out. Don't oh, want to lose any parts. Okay. So the reel is... Um, there's no thread on it, I gotta put thread on there, I guess. It, it's uh, a little bit janky, I guess this nut's loose. But, ah, uh, it's a fishing reel, what do you expect? I don't really know. Like I said, I'm not a fisherman, but I got a long, I got a few months to learn how to use this thing. Now the pen part. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit large. Okay. So the cap does nothing, I guess. All right. So yeah, it's telescoping and it's got the little holes in it. Oh, wow. And um, I don't know what these are. I'm going to have to figure out how to use this thing. <laughs> But each of these, each of the segments are independent, so you sort of have to manually align the holes for the fishing line, I'm assuming. And it's pretty long. Uh, I'm not really sure what's... Oh, okay. Oh, it comes out even more. And then, okay, you can screw this here. So the reel must have fixed to this part somehow. Uh, like I said, I got time to figure it out. Um... But uh, I own one of these now. Hey, maybe I'll bring my frog spear with me, too. <laughs> okay. Another thing that I got... Uh, is, that uh, okay. is this little molly knife? Uh, I've seen these kind of online here and there on a bunch of, like, Chinese websites. It's just this little tiny stubby knife with a little tiny stubby sheath. They're not expensive, um, and I guess it's made to fit onto molly gear. And it comes with string. Funny, this came with string. The fishing rod did not. All right, let's see what we got here. Okay. 
it's very cheap, <laughs> of course. And the sheath looks like it kind of might come out of there or something. I guess, I guess it's kind of a neck knife. Oh, it's it's kind of rubbery material. Okay. So it's like bendable, and this just kind of slips in there and friction keeps it in place. I thought it was, you know, kind of neat. And I guess this is the part that you somehow interface with your molly gear. Um, but I wonder how to... I don't want to break it, but it it definitely looks like it's modular and meant to come apart in some way. Hmm. But I don't want to break it, so I'm going to leave it as is. So now I have... Well, let's talk about the, the knife itself for a second, I guess. There's this... A little bit of jimping up here and it appears to be a, one big solid piece of metal with this very rubbery plastic um, and some ergonomic grooves here excuse me and it's not sh oh my god it is so not sharp you can actually maybe see how they didn't even put a blade on it it's just a dull slab but I'm okay with that because I didn't really think that I wanted to use this for anything. <laughs> Maybe I'll open my next box with it. Okay. Um, it says Tactical Molly Shiv. Shit hits the fan survival. A lot of words on the back here. Let's see. Discreet self defense weapon, rubber over molded handle. Premium gripping ridges, integrated plastic molly webbing adapter, lanyard hole for included lanyard cord. This stuff is so like it. It, it kind of almost reminds me of like a fuse. <laughs> hmm. Over molded rubber heavy duty sheath, a one inch 440C stainless steel blade, two and a half inches overall. And there's kind of an interesting picture on the back that shows it tied to a boot. <laughs> tied to the end of a stick. Or this guy's like got it in between his knuckles. <laughs> I think I'm going to keep this card just for the visuals. That's, that's kind of funny. Uh, okay, moving along. I saw this and I thought it's inexpensive and I have to have it. This is the Punisher necklace knife that just kind of dropped out of there okay so it's a Punisher style skull thing it actually looks more like a predator mask to me um, but what made me want this was the fact that the, the teeth of this predator alien mask punisher thing actually comes out and you have a little dagger come <laughs> so when you when you pull this out the teeth actually become the handle to this little tiny dagger <laughs> and then this thing just kind of looks kind of weird without it like it reminds me of something from the movie Kroll And it is exactly what I expected, so I'm happy about that purchase. Um, now, in the event that there are no cutting implements in um, my backpack, I decided I'm going to need something that I can use to, I don't know, cut wood, shape wood in some way. So I decided, why well, don't I just bring an axe with me? And if um, there's something in the backpack that I could use, I'll use it. If not, I have a backup. Now to do that, I've decided to go and got this fantasy alien predator. Uh, that's what it was called, an alien predator axe. Okay, we got... Oh. We have a lot of uh, styrofoam 
and that's annoying. I have to vacuum. Bear with me while I try not to inhale myself while I clean this up. Oh yeah. <laughs> Whew. Styrofoam everywhere. Well. So I'll be out in the woods cutting wood with this. <laughs> what we're looking at here is kind of an alien head, an H.R. Geiger style alien head, I guess, with like a green, a very rubbery green thing. And it's loose. I know nothing about this axe. I just saw it and I, I had to have it, but I guess this is just loose. It doesn't appear like it's supposed to come out at all. Mm, ow. <laughs> and conveniently the pommel <sighs> Jesus is also got some pretty sharp shit going on there and there's more green translucent rubbery stuff there and it's pretty heavy and the material is actually not too terrible in terms of its quality and um, it's sort of like a foul leather look to it, but I'm pretty sure it's just plastic. So, oh yeah, and then along the spine here, you got more, I guess it's like an alien body kind of deal. And there's like an alien foot <laughs> at the bottom. So this would be like if a face hugger mated with an ax, this would burst out of the belly of the ax. <laughs> It also came with a little bit of hardware. Oh, okay, for uh, wall mounting. I don't know. I've already got a lot of shit on my wall. But I'm actually going to use this. I'm going to bring this out with me. It didn't come with a sheath, so I guess I'll just wrap it in a blanket or something. I'm going to use this out in the wilderness because that's what I bought it for. And uh, is it sharp? Probably not, but uh, actually kind of sharp. It'll be good enough for splitting wood. So that is actually everything that I bought. Um, as tempting as I am, as it is to rip open that bag and show you what's in it, it would ruin the surprise for when I'm actually out in the wilderness. So um, I think I have everything I need. I can get fish. Uh, I can hunt aliens. And... I can tie this to my boot, and I got a little tiny dagger so that I can pick the food out of my teeth after I fillet that fish. I think I'm good to go. I'll see you with this stuff in the summer. This has been JJ Jinx, Truck Stop Knives.